everyone, I'm Jo Barker Logie. Once again, apologies for the beautifully patched up wall behind me. I know it doesn't look very beautiful, but uh, it is what it is for now. Today we're going to make a complete bracelet start to finish. I've called it Crystal Peaks and I will show you exactly why. So this is the bracelet we're making. It's using Iris Duos. Those are the colored beads you can see and Zorowski crystal bicones. And if I put it on its side, you'll see it's got a bit of a 3D element going on. So hence the peaks and while Zorowski crystals, we're using crystals. So that's the back of it. And there we are at the front. It's made using one length of thread. So we're not making individual motifs that we're going to join together. It's a simple make and it's super quick too. Let's have a look at what we're going to be using and for the demo I'm going to use a different colorway. So I've got size 11 seed beads here and they are metallic plum. They're one of my favorite purples in the in the seed beads. Then I've got four mil Zorowski bicones here and these are rose water opal. It's such a delicate color, it's gorgeous. And then my iris duos are aluminium silver. They're a matte finish as opposed to a chrome shiny silver. You'll also need a toggle clasp and of course your needle. I'm using a size 10 beading needle and some fire line. I'm using the crystal today because I don't want the thread to show through those beautiful opal bicones. Um, and I'm using six pound. So Let's before get you get going, just check that both holes of all your iris duos are free from any residue and not clogged up in any way. There's nothing more frustrating than getting halfway through a project and trying to pass through the second hole of one of your two hole beads and you can't get that needle through. Remember that the iris duos have got two very definite sides. So they've got a right side, which is more domed and a wrong side, which is flat. And when you're picking up your iris duos, you need to pick them all up the same way. So we're going to start with the first element of our bracelet, and we will complete that whole element before moving on to the next one. But just one piece of thread. So thread on about three meters of thread onto your needle. If that's too much for you, work with a smaller piece of thread, but you probably will need to add in more as your design grows. Um, I'm going to work with three meters, so apologies, it's going to take me a while to get beads down to the end of the thread. So I'm going to start off by picking up one iris duo, one size 11, another iris duo, another 11. Now make sure that you're picking up your iris duos all the same way. So I've got the domed top of them facing up towards me. Another iris duo. 11, a fourth iris duo, and a fourth 11. So there they are. I'm going to move them down towards the end of my three meters of thread, leaving a 20 centimeter tail so that I can add on one end of my toggle clasp when I've got to the end of my design. I'm going to tie the tail thread off now against the working thread in a surgeon's knot. And that is just by doing a normal overhand knot to begin with. And then the second time you pass the thread through the loop once and through the loop twice. And pull tight and that's my surgeon's knot. And I am just going to move the needle through the next iris duo to pull that knot into the iris duo so that it's at no risk of being snipped off at any stage. Right, so there, if I just hold it the right way for you, I have the start of my design, and this is what I'm going to refer to as the inner ring. So the inner ring is that hole that's closest to the center there with the size 11 seed beads. We're going to also be joining the outer ring, so the second hole, if I hold it on its side there, you can see there's a second empty hole there. So I've just passed through an iris duo and I'm gonna pass back through the empty hole of that same iris duo. 
so that I can start connecting the top holes. Just move some stuff out of the way on the side here because it's going to be snagged on my three meters of thread. So to join these outer points, I'm going to pick up an 11, a crystal, and an 11, and I'm going to pass the needle through the next empty hole. And again, I need to connect the two, an 11, a 4 mil bicone, and a size 11 seed bead, and through the next empty hole. Once you've got the pattern of this you're going to get super quick. So an 11, a crystal and an 11. And one more, an 11, a crystal and an 11 and pass through. I just want to come through the iris duo for now. So we've connected the inner ring and we've connected the outer ring too. And I want my tail to be on the opposite end to my working thread, but I need to bridge the gap here. So my thread is coming through. I've just passed through this iris duo here. I'm going to pass through the lower hole of my iris duo. The same one. I haven't picked up any beads. And I'm now going to close this gap across the center here. Just release a bit more thread and I'm going to do that with an 11, a 4 mil bicone and an 11 and if I hold my work like this my thread is exiting, I'm going to bring it round this way it's exiting the base of this iris duo and I'm going to pass the needle through the opposite side again just through the base of the iris duo but my thread was coming out that way so if I come from the top to the bottom of the bead my crystal and my elevens should lie straight across the center just like that. So if I pop that down, I've got my tail thread to the left here and this is where I'm going to be adding a toggle clasp and I now need to get my needle exiting from this crystal on the right so that I can continue my design to the right. So my thread is exiting the base of this iris duo. I'm going to pass up through that second hole of the iris duo. Obviously get a lot easier when you've got shorter thread. Now I'm going to pass through the little 11. Pull my thread tight. Through the little 11 and through the crystal. If you skip over the 11, you're going to land up with thread showing. So you must make sure that you are passing through all the beads. Right, now I'm ready to start my second motif, but on this one we started with the inner ring and then moved to connect the outer ring. We're now going to connect the outer ring and I've got a crystal, so I need an 11. Then I need an iris duo. Now remember, this is how I need them sitting in my design. So make sure you go through the right side of your iris duos. So my thread is exiting the top of the crystal. 
I'm going through the left hand hole of my iris duo. Then I need an 11, a crystal, because I'm doing the outer ring, an 11, and then an iris duo, an 11, a crystal, an 11, an iris duo. Always just have a quick check to make sure your iris duos are sitting the right way. So an 11, a crystal, and an 11. And I need my fourth iris duo now. I've got my crystal there, but I need an 11 the other side. And there is my fourth crystal. So if I pop this down here so that you can have a look. Sorry, it's a lot on one little needle. My outer ring. I'm utilizing the crystal from my previous little design. Then I'm picking up an 11 to go on the side of the crystal. Four of my iris duos with the crystal and the 11 sequence in between. And I'm finishing with an 11 because I'm now going to pass that needle through the crystal, but from the other direction. So the thread is exiting the top and I'm passing through the crystal from the base to the top. I'm going to pull my thread through. I've got the external ring. Now your beads might be like that, but when we come to connect the inside of them, we're going to flip them all in to the center. <clears throat> so I'm pulling my thread tight. I'm just through the crystal. I'm going to pass through the 11. And the top hole of the iris duo. I so wish I was working with a shorter piece of thread. Now I need to pass to the inner ring because I need to complete the inner ring. So my thread is just through that top iris duo and I'm gonna pass, change direction through the lower hole of the same iris duo. And I'm ready to connect the inner ring, which was just a little size 11 seed bead between each of the iris duos. So I've picked up one size 11 I'm following the direction of the thread path and I'm going through that inner hole of the next iris duo. I'm going to pick up another 11, flip this one into the center and go through the inner hole. Got to connect the next two, flip it up, and I'm going through the empty hole, but it's bringing those iris duos into the center. And one more to connect. Through the inner hole on that one. So I've got my outer ring connected, my inner ring connected. Now I need to do my crystal across the center. And that was one 11, one crystal, one 11. Exiting the base of this iris duo and I'm gonna come in the top of the iris duo on the diagonal opposite to it. So through that hole there. I've got two complete and I need to bead through or pass the needle through my beads till I'm exiting from this crystal on the right to continue. So I'm going to just pass up through the outer hole of the iris duo through the 11 and through the crystal.
and I'm ready for the third section. In exactly the same way, I'm going to build the outer ring again first and then flip all the iris duos into the center and do the middle. So my thread is exiting from a crystal. I need an 11 first. And I need an iris duo. And I'm going through the left hand hole of my iris duo. An 11. Crystal. Because between each iris duo is an 11, a crystal, and an 11. Through the next iris duo, 11. Crystal and 11. Another iris duo. 11. Crystal and 11. So, so far, I've got three of my iris duos. I need one more. And I just need an 11 on the side of the last iris duo because there's my crystal. I'm going to pass through the crystal from the bottom to the top. Let me just get a bit more needle through there. So the thread is exiting the top of the crystal and I'm passing back through the same crystal but from the opposite direction. are playing with me today. So just through the crystal and I've got my outer ring ready again. So on those that ring of beads that I have just added, sorry my thread got caught, I'm going to pass in the same direction that the thread is going, through the little 11 and through the outer hole of the super duo. Just pull my thread through. You want your tension to be quite tight in this one because that way you're going to get the little raised loops or the little crystal peaks. So I've pulled my thread through quite tight and I'm going to be connecting the inner ring so I'm passing through the inner hole of that first iris duo. And I just have little 11s connecting the inner holes together. So I've picked up one 11 and I'm going through the inner hole of the next iris duo. So I've changed direction with my beading again. Another 11 through the inner hole. And one more to go between those two. that down. You can see that my thread is exiting the base of this iris duo here. I'm going to fill in the center now by picking up one eleven, one crystal and one eleven. And I'm going to pass through the top of the iris duo that's diagonally opposite that one so that I get that crystal lying straight. So the thread was exiting this one the bottom of this iris duo and I'm passing through the one that's diagonally opposite. Pull it through and there I've got three little sections complete and I need to bead through my beads so that I'm exiting this crystal on the right to do the outer ring of the next one. So it was just this first section here where we started with the inner ring and then connected the outer ring. Moving on to this one, we did the outer ring and then we connected the inner ring. And then we did the outer ring and connected the inner ring. So from now onwards, you're going to be creating the outer ring with the crystals 
and then connecting the inner ring just with the size 11 seed beads. And you're going to do as many of these little sections that you need to wrap around your wrist. So I'll come back to you when I've done all my sections and then I can show you how to add in the I've just popped my last crystal across the center here on the end. I hope you've used pause, rewind if you've forgotten the sequence of beads and I've now beaded 10 little sections to complete the length that I need. I'll pop down the number of crystals, the number of iris duos and the finished length of my bracelet in the description below so then you'll be able to gauge how many you need to use. And I've, as I said, I've just popped on this last crystal across the top here. So I'm going to bead or pass my needle through the beads so that I'm exiting the crystal on the extreme right hand side again. And I'm ready to add in one end of my clasp and I'm just going to do it very, very simply. I'm going to pick up seven of my little seed beads. That's seven of my size 11s. I'm gonna let them drop down to my bracelet. I'm gonna pass the needle through one end of my toggle clasp and I'm going to come back through three of my little size 11s. And then I need to pick up another four because I had seven in total and I've come through three. And I'm going to pass back through the crystal from the other side. I've pulled my bead in quite tight, there we go. I pop that down just so you can have a look. So it's a very simple edition of the class by adding seven seed beads, coming through the toggle, coming back down through three, and then picking up another four and passing back through the crystal. So I'm ready to end off this side now, and I'm gonna just pass through that little 11 on the side. So my thread will be just ahead of the iris duo. And this is where I'm gonna tie my first double hitch knot. So I've bought the needle, under the thread bridge that's been formed between that 11 and the iris duo. Form a loop and pass the needle through the loop. That is a half hitch. And to make it a double half hitch, you're just gonna do exactly the same again. So I'm passing the, the needle under the thread bridge. Form a loop. Pass the needle through the loop and pull tight. That is a double half hitch. And then I'm going to go through the iris duo to pull that knot into the iris duo. I would do that again. Do another double half hitch, maybe just ahead of this crystal here before ending off my thread. Threading the needle onto my tail, exiting the crystal that's on the left hand side and adding the other hand end of my my clasp. So I'm going to do that for you now and I'll come back on to the you. other side now. I've just picked up my seven size 11 seed beads. I'm going through the other end of my toggle clasp and I'm going to pass the needle back through three of my seed beads. Pull that in tight. Pick up another four and pass through the crystal from the other side. So it's going to be from that side this time. There's the other end of my toggle connected. We're oh, getting all tongue tied today. I'm going to pass through a couple of beads pulling my thread through tightly and I'm going to come through the size 11 
and here I'm going to do a double half hitch between the thread on the under the thread bridge through the loop pull tight under the thread bridge through the loop pull tight and come through some of my beads and I'm going to do it once more therefore if one knot gives there's another one to keep it secure. So one there. And one there. And I'm going to pass through that bead again, just pulling the knot in. And I'm going to get my thread zapper. So just zap off the thread. And here you have your Crystal Peaks bracelet. There's the other one that I made earlier. So have a go. Post your makes to my Facebook page so we can all have a look at how you've done and what colours you've chosen. And I'll be back soon with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.